Lockheed proposed that their airplane be used for battlefield surveillance and target acquisition. The Army awarded Lockheed a contract to build two planes. The program was given the military designation XV-4A, but most people referred to it as the Hummingbird. After testing the new propulsion system, the Hummingbird was loosely tethered to the ground for safety. The reaction control system was simple. Air was bled from the compressor and fed to the nozzles at the nose, tail, and both wingtips. The pilot controlled hover stability the same way he would in forward flight. After gaining confidence in the reaction controls, Lockheed engineers cut the Hummingbird free from its tethers. But just as a precaution, they attached a 300-pound lead ball to keep the plane close to the ground. Eventually, the airplane was freed from its ball and chain and allowed to hover freely. The milestone test was passed when the test pilot could safely hover while following a large red X painted on the tarmac. The Hummingbird hovered with its nose pointing skyward because the thrust ejectors in the fuselage were angled 12 degrees aft. To transition to wing-borne flight, the pilot drooped the nose 10 degrees towards the ground. With the nose lowered in this position, the thrust ejectors were now pointing 22 degrees aft. This caused the plane to accelerate forward. At 70 knots, the pilot pitched the nose up 30 degrees and diverted the thrust from one of the engines from lift to cruise. With the engine exhaust diverted aft, the fuselage doors were closed and the plane was flying. The first conventional flight took place on July 7, 1962. Then, a problem occurred during a landing approach at the Lockheed Flight Test Center. While coming into land, the pilot was unable to control the plane in roll. He somehow kept it from flipping over and managed to land at the expense of the undercarriage. <laughs> 